This is Take 5 with Bentley, Nevada. In the studio with me once again is Carlos Gomez. Carlos is VP of the Augury Strategic Alliance. And uh, what that means in practice is he is deeply involved in the relationship between Bentley, Nevada and Augury that have joined forces to deliver a subscription-based service for monitoring lower criticality assets. And Carlos, in our last visit, we talked a little bit about some of the insights we obtained from these digital transformation leaders through the industry. And uh, we, we mentioned scalability is very important to them. ROI is very important to them. And most of them insist on a proof of concept. They don't just buy on faith, uh, regardless of how many glowing endorsements. Uh, and so that means once you start putting in a pilot implementation, it's got to deliver value very quickly. Now, that leads us into basically a question of why are they looking so intently at these lower critical assets. I mean, uh, conventional wisdom is, oh, no, we're good. We've got that base covered. We, we've been using, you know, portable walk-around programs for many years. And, and so it begs the question, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. What's going on with these less critical assets that, that needs attention? Absolutely, Steve. And, and it's a great concept and dialogue we're constantly having with our customers because you think about a average, let's say, let's pick a refinery. So, you know, you're talking about 1% of the equipment being critical, the other 99% being the, let's say, general purpose machines we're talking to them about. So, and, and let's admit, we've been covering these machines, whether through a portable data collection program or even simple monitoring. The problem is there are simply too many of these assets and those assets drive too many alarms. <laughs> And so whether we like it or not, there's not enough people, there's not enough time to address those alarms. And what ends up happening is a, the bulk of all, all of our efforts typically are going to be spent on establishing those alarms, modifying them, manually responding to them, and, and really a program that traditionally would take care of these 10,000 pieces of equipment, right, and your general purpose, you don't, you're really focused on alarm management now instead of asset management. For me, I kind of think about how much time is spent just collecting data. So before you even get to the point of analyzing the data and extracting information from the data, how many footsteps, you know, are being expended just to go gather the data? And I, I, yeah. one of the things that stands out to me with the machine health solution is the data gathering is happening automatically. You're absolutely right. So, and it's interesting that you put it that way because if you think about your typical portable data collection program, first, you've already decided that you had to isolate the spectrum of assets out of those 99% we're talking about to cover. So, by the very nature of the human factor, the steps factor, the time factor, you, you've had to tell yourself, I'm just going to have to take risk on some of these machines, whether I like it or not. So, now we're saying, okay, for the select machines we did decide we're going to have cover with this portable data collection program, and, and you will catch saves and you will catch failures, but there's going to be many other assets that not on time, not with the right amount of people and help, we're going to be able to basically put efforts around making sure that that unplanned downtime that's causing the average to be in the States today, right, or in the world, over there, that call it 94 to 95% range, that's keeping you from that place you'd like to be, right? Which higher in that 97, 98% space, all because there's just too many of these machines to cover. So in, in these engagements, you know, there's the issue of it's too many machines, too much manual labor. But then if you think about this idea of digital transformation, what's, how would you characterize the digital piece that the machine health offering is bringing and why that resonates with, say, a digital transformation leader. Obviously saying, well, let's just double the number of people to collect more data or, or analyze more data. That's not digital at all, but what is it that Bentley's bringing to the party, Carlos, that, that makes it a digital transformation project? Yeah, so maybe an interesting data point, right? So we've done a little bit of study here in on average, when you think about a long-term service agreement that employs, you know, portable data collection individuals, contractors, and the associated um, 
equipment, we're talking about you're going to cover about 4% of your <laughs> assets at your plant. Mm -hmm. So when the digital transformation leader is looking at what they're doing here, now they're thinking about, do I have using AI a potential means of finally covering the full breadth or at least far, far, far beyond the 4% that I typically was trying to garner, right, that I've identified as helpful to take on a system of analytics and a system of AI enabling that machine health to be able to approach addressing those assets effectively at scale across multiple plants. And again, all theoretically digested under one sort of system and dashboarding so that you can easily as an executive or as the plant level, see how much you're accomplishing. So let me repeat what I just heard because it came as a bit of a surprise. So we said earlier that the critical assets might comprise oh, on average 1%. And then, Correct. so, okay, there's 99% uh, out there that aren't getting the love they need. And the the incumbent approach is addressing what? An, an incremental 3%? So you're still left with 96% of your assets that aren't really being adequately addressed? Is that what I heard you say? Yeah, and those are tied to, let's say, uh, some sort of service commitment, right, where you've got a program around things. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that can stretch depending on your budget to as high as call it 15 or 20. But on average, given that you're isolating where you're looking to go attack this problem, mm -hmm. it, it's never the scale that you're going to need if you want to cover 99%. Mm -hmm. What would you say is keeping people away from that 99%? Has it been a technology issue? Has it been a cost issue in terms of just how these things are commercially structured? Where's, where's, where's kind of the showstopper occurring today? That, that is an excellent question. And, and I really do believe this. It, I believe that first it begins with belief. Uh, I do think that there was an over-promise and under-delivery of what the industry was trying to convey in the past. So part of the help there has been that purpose-built AI can take us to a different place. Just to give you an example, uh, we did a survey and almost 50% of our customers told us it's too good to be true. Mm -hmm. Or the other 30% said it's undelivered. So <laughs> you've already kind of killed the vast majority of folks who believe in this. Mm -hmm. Now let's move on to the next step, right? Let's say that, okay, fine, let's go play this out. Then I do believe it's, it's what you're referring to, Steve. I think that there was truly a technology gap on the necessary bandwidth, right? Maybe the price point and acceptance of a subscription model mm -hmm. on what this could mean. Mm -hmm. And obviously moving theoretically from an on-prem to an on-cloud-based way and approach of analyzing your, your, your assets, right? That These three things just took a little more time just because our industry is moving in that direction. Well, Carlos, let's, let's go after that kind of, uh, I tend to think of it like an autoimmune response when you're talking to customers and, and you, the AI word comes out and you can almost see their eyes roll. Like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I've heard that story. Um, we're, we're, we're out of time for this episode, but let's, let's go there. Let's just take it, you know, head on in the next episode. And you can talk about why is AI necessary? What is it about this AI that makes it different from other AI? And is it, is it truly over-promising and under-delivering? Or are our customers experiencing something, something different? And uh, I think we can easily chew up an episode or two just on that topic alone. With that, you have been listening to Take 5, Benton, Nevada, a Baker Hughes business. We'll see you next time.